video we're going to talk about edge tension, a question that comes up all the time. And ultimately, when we're talking about edge tension, we're talking about the edges of the work having the same nice, even tension as the rest of your work. And my big picture answer to this is edge tension is part of all over tension. And as soon as, um, as soon as the stitches that you're making are all even looking in the, in the middle of your work, the edges will come naturally. And it's kind of a frustrating thing, especially for newer knitters, because you can learn all the stitches, you can knit and purl, knit two together and yarn over and all the stitches. And good tension is kind of the last piece of the whole puzzle, and it takes practice. So edge tension really is a part of the big tension picture, but I, am, I, I really thought about this to break it down to really get a few pointers that I can offer because I know that people find this troubling, troubling. So let's go ahead and take a look. Here is a piece I have demonstrate that demonstrates good edge tension. You'll see that the stitches on the edge of the work are even with everything else. This is our goal. And on this piece, I've tried to make all of the mistakes. <laughs> you see here the difference between the, the good and bad. I've really tried to make all the mistakes here. And I'm going to first show you the mistakes, and then we'll talk about how to, uh, how to get better edge tension, hopefully. The first way that you can mess up your, the tension on the edge of your stitches is the way that you're holding the needle. A lot of times people will um, hold with either several fingers or a couple of fingers and those couple of fingers will be on the edge of the work and they'll stretch it out as you go. So when you're holding the work, be sure to not just be hanging on to one stitch with the weight of your hand at all to stretch that out and just um, maybe pinch the work instead of stressing the stitches on the needle. Okay, that's my first. The second thing that might happen is just not paying attention to how tightly you're making that stitch. If you make that stitch and pull it through, and pull it through really too far, and then go into the next one and work the next stitch, that stitch is going to be crazy loose and the next one might be okay, but you can't really go back and fix that one. You have to take care of it right away. And I want to show you an example of that on the other end of the work. So I'm over here at the left edge of the work. And because I've deliberately made all the mistakes I can make, I've got this stitch that's really pretty big here. I'm going to knit into it and turn my work. And you can see that that stitch that was really big is hanging there like a giant loop. And I can pull on the working yarn. It's not going to do any good because it's actually the row below. And then sometimes what newer knitters will do is they will, they'll think, oh, well, I have to have my working yarn in back to knit, so they'll do this. And when they do that, things just got a lot better looking. That big loose stitch is no longer sticking out, but you've just increased by one. Let me show you that again. Here's your big loose stitch. I, I need to have my working yarn in back, so I do this and it creates two stitches out of one, but things look a lot better. But, but ultimately, that's not going to help you because increasing by one is a mistake. You always want to pull your working yarn this way and not over the needle at the edge of the work. So those are the main mistakes that you can make. Just um, not paying attention to um, the stitches as you make them and or, or increasing accidentally on the edge of the work or stretching out the stitches with your hand as you're holding the needle. Let's talk about the right things to do. Okay, I'm gently holding the needle and not stressing out any single stitch here. And I have these needles that have a nice long taper on them, and I'm not going to put the needle in all the way. See, the, I have this taper where the needle is thinner, and then it doesn't get to its full size until about right here. So I'm going to work the edge stitches on the tips of the needles. And so I'll put my needle in. I actually make sure I have some good tension on the stitch that, the old stitch that I'm working through, wrap it and pull it through, and then slide it onto the fullest part of the needle. 
that is going to make sure that stitch stays tight and it's it's not too tight i mean it is the size of the fullest part of the needle but it's no tight it's no looser than that and then i make sure that stitch is tight as i work the next stitch and then i just keep going once i'm a few stitches in take a look because if if, if it's going to be loose, you're going to be able to see it now, and now is the time to go back and fix it, because once you go down and back, it's too late. You're going to have to rip out to get it right. So I see that it looks just like the stitches next to it and no looseness, and it's because I worked the stitch on the tips and made sure it was tight as I worked the next stitch. All the while making sure I'm not stretching out these stitches with my hand while I hold the needle. Okay, I really broke that down to think of the things that would make um, edge tension trickier than tension on the rest of the work. I hope that answers some questions. I hope it helps. Good luck.